This video is part of our course on modern C++ which goes from the absolute beginning all the way to a point where you can use advanced features of the C++ programming language. We even cover the four big features in C++20 and that is concepts, ranges, coroutines, and modules. And we have a bunch of exercises to really help you nail this down. Please do check this course out if you are interested in this. And you can also check out what others are saying about the course here. The link is going to be shared in the description below. In this lecture, we're going to learn about bitwise logical operators. And uh, these are mostly the same logical operators we have learned about before, but they are going to be working at the bit level. So we're going to be ending bits, ordering bits, zoring bits, and not ing bits. In this table, we're going to see what these operations really do. We have two operands, A and B, and we're going to be looking at all of these operators. We have A and B here. We have A or B here. We have not A. We use this symbol here to note that we're going to negate. And we use this operator here to note that we are going to be Zorang. And the meaning of these operations is exactly what you see here. If you add A and B, and A and B are a zero, you're going to get a zero. A is zero, B is one, you're going to get a zero. A is one, B is zero, you're going to get a zero. And if both A and B are ones, you're going to get a one. In other words, if you take two bits and do an end operation, if one of them is zero, you're going to get a zero and you're going to get a one only if both bits are ones. Or is really what we have seen before, you're going to get a one if either of the operands is one and if both operands are zeros, you're going to get a zero. And this is what we have in this column here for the OR operation. The negation operator is going to negate. There is nothing more to explain about this. If we have a zero, we get a one. If we have a one, we get a zero. That's what we see here. But the ZOR operation is only going to give you a one if either of the operands is a one. But if both operands are a zero or one, you're going to get a zero. And you might be asking, why should I care about these things? These things may come out very handy depending on some applications you might be doing. For example, if you interface to a lot of hardware in your C++ code, you might need these things and you're going to be needing to do these kinds of operations on your bets inside your integers. Okay, you might be saying, this is really cool, but how do I do this in C++? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here is an example of how you can use the bitwise AND operator. We have two variables, value one and value two. They are unsigned car, so they're going to take up eight bits in memory and we can only store in positive values. So we can print them out. We're going to print them out like this, value one and value two. And you see that we are taking advantage of STD bit set. Notice here that we are telling it that we have eight bits in our value. This is important. You have to put it in here. And down here, you see that we can end value one and value two using this operator here. This is bitwise and. And what it's going to do, it's going to end each bit from value one and value two at the same positions. So what we're going to do really is going to take the one here at position zero and end that with the AND at position zero in value two. We're going to take one and zero. We're going to take zero and one. We're going to take zero and zero. And we're going to end these things up. So if we really want to store the result here, we're going to get a one because A and one is one. We're going to get a zero here because one and zero yields a zero. We're going to get a zero here. We're going to get a zero here. And we're going to get four zeros for these four bits that we have for value one and value two. This is what we're going to be getting from this operation. And if we try to print this out here, we're going to see this on the terminal or the console. Here is an example of how you can do bitwise or. It is really the same thing. You're going to be doing the or operation on each bit of these two variables. And we're going to be getting the result here. You see that we're going to store the result back and you're going to see that we are going to print this result using STD bit set. We can also do not 
And here you see that we have not value one. This is going to flip off every bet in this variable here. We're going to have not value two here. We're going to print this out. We can pass a literal directly. Here we are using a binary literal. We can also use a hex literal if we want, and it is going to give us whatever it is we expect. In this case, we're going to be flipping off each bit in whatever variable that we are negating here. We have the ZOR operation, and again, we're going to be carrying out this operation on each two bits in our variables, and we're going to be doing the operations on the bit that are at the same position here. Okay, so this is really all about these operators. I hope you have an idea about how we can work with them, but we still need to go to Visual Studio Code and try this out ourselves. Here we are in our working folder. We're going to grab the files from our template project as we always do. We're going to go to our current project, logical bitwise operators. We're going to go in and we're going to open the project up in Visual Studio Code. Let's do that. We're going to open our main file. We're going to get rid of what we don't need here. We are going to put in our test code. The first thing you notice is that we need this set with manipulator and you know that it lives in IOMANIP. So we're going to include that IOMANIP. And uh, we also need STD bit set here to be able to print our values in binary format. So we're going to include bit set here. Once we do this, we should be ready to run this piece of code. The first thing you see here, we have value one, value two, we have a few values inside, and this is the binary representation of these things. And uh, we're going to print them out, value one and value two, we're going to see them on the console, but we're going to bitwise end them. And what this is going to do is take one and one here, it's going to end them, we're going to start the result somewhere, it's going to end them bit by bit. This is really what we mean by bitwise. So if we print this out, we expect to see four zeros in front. We're going to see three zeros in front and we're going to have a one in this bit position here, which is the first bit. Okay, the convention where you are looking at your binary numbers, this is bit zero, this is bit one, bit two, bit three, bit four, bit five, bit six, bit seven. And uh, this is the convention I am going to be using when I talk about my bets. So we are going to do the end operation for the bets at position zero, we're going to get a one, and all the other bets are going to give us a zero. This is what we expect to see when we print this out. Let's bring up our terminal so that we can see things printed out nicely here. And we're going to run the task to build with GCC. The build is going to be good. If we run Rooster, we're going to see value one is this value here it is what we have here value two is this value and we're going to end them and we're going to get exactly what we expect all the others are going to give a zero except for the bits at position zero which are all ones and if any of that doesn't make sense please come back to this table and try to see that if we have all ones we're going to get a one but if we don't have all ones, we're going to get a zero for the AND operation here. Okay, we have seen how we can do the AND operation. Let's try and do the OR operation. And we're going to do it like this. What we're going to really do is uh, use value one or value two, and we're going to print this out using STD bit set. This is going to allow us to see this in binary. And we are using this column width here so that we see things aligned nicely. Let's build and see what this gives us. We're going to build with GCC and we're going to run Rooster now. And we have our values. If we OR them for the bit at position zero, we're going to get a one because OR gives you a one if either of the operands is one. So we're going to get a one for bit position zero. That's here. We're going to get a one for bit position one because we have a one in here, that's the one. And we're going to get a one for bit position two because we have a one here. And for the rest, we're going to get a zero. This is what we expect. This is how bitwise or works. We can also take a look at bitwise not. Let's put that down here and let's hide this tab here so that we can see the entire thing as best as we can, because some things you're not going to see these comments here. 
So we are trying to do an auto operation and we're going to negate value one, we're going to negate value two, and uh, we're going to negate a literal here, and we're going to negate the same literal, but we're going to be passing that in hex here. The first one here was passed in binary format. And if we run this, we expect every single bit of this value that we pass here to be flipped off. If it's a one, it's going to be a zero. If it's a zero, it's going to be a one. That's what we mean here. We can build with GCC, and we're going to run this. And uh, if we bring this up a little bit, we're going to see our value one and value two. Let's clear so that we see the entire thing. I think it's really confusing there. Let's bring this up enough and we run rooster. So we're going to see value one, it's here, value two, it's here. And we are interested in looking at the output for the not operator. So not value one is going to give us this and you see that all the bits are flipped off where we had zero in this value we have a one now and where we had ones we have zeros and we can also flip off value two you're going to see that we're going to get exactly what we expect bits that are zeros are going to become ones bits that are ones are going to become zeros we can also flip off a literal we're going to do that and we're going to get this result we flip off the same literal, we're going to get the result that we expect here. This is how bitwise not works. And again, if you are confused by any of this, please come back to this table and you're going to see how the negation operator really works. It's all here. Okay, we are making some progress. We're going to go down and look at the ZOR operator. This is how you type it. And uh, we're going to call the operator like we do here. And what it's going to do, it's going to take each bit in uh, value one and zor it with the corresponding bit in value two. And what does the zor operator do exactly? What the zor operator does, it's going to give you a one if either of the operands is a one. And if all operands are either zero or one, it's going to give you a zero. So for example here, it's all zeros, so we're going to get a zero. It's all ones, we're going to get a zero, but zero and one, we're going to get a one. And again, this may come in handy in some of the applications you're going to be doing with C++. Here is how you can do this in code. So we expect to zor value one and value two. If we build and run this, let's build with GCC. We're going to clear. And we're going to bring this up a little bit so that we see the entire thing. And we're going to run rooster. We have value one and value two. And Zor is exactly what we expect. We have all ones, we're going to get a zero. We have one and zero, we're going to get a one. We have zero one, we're going to get a one. And all the remaining bits are going to be zeros because it's all zeros. And this is really what we expect. This is how you can work with these bitwise logical operators, and they may come in handy in uh, many C++ applications. In this lecture, I just wanted you to be aware of them. This is really all we set out to do in this lecture. I hope you found it interesting. We are going to stop here in this lecture. In the next one, we're going to learn about compound logical and shift operators.